the airline industry has seen a number of mergers in the last decade. Three years ago, United joined forces with Continental. That created the world's biggest airline. They kept the United name. Jeff Smysek is the CEO. He's with us along with our travel editor, Peter Greenberg. Welcome. Good, morning. Good, morning. Good to see you. So what, what do you believe is the possibility and the good possibility arising out of these airline mergers? Because we hear some complaints about them. Well, the mergers have helped us match capacity to demand, which has helped us become profitable. We've been an industry that has lost money since the Wright brothers, and that's not good for anybody. It's not for, good for consumers. It's not good for communities we serve. It's certainly not good for our shareholders, um, and it isn't it isn't good for our coworkers. <laughs> Why would either? you choose that as a place to work? <laughs> yeah. Exactly right. right. And 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 through mergers. Uh, and through capacity discipline, we've actually been, begun to make money and begun to make money consistently so we can make the kinds of investments in product and services that our yeah. customers want. For example, Continental had a very good reputation for service, United less so at the time of the merger. Well, and, we're, and we're improving the service. In fact, we're, you know, we've trained now over 80% of our coworkers, our frontline coworkers, in, a, in, in customer service called It's Our Job. And our customer service metrics have, have climbed considerably uh, from where they were last year. So we're, we are. We're investing in our people. We're investing in technology for them to use to serve our customers better. But from a capacity point of view, you know, when you shrink capacity, you have more people competing essentially for fewer seats. What does that do for fares? Well, we need to make sure that we have fares that are compensatory. So we actually, you know, in, in the old days, Peter, we charged less for every seat than it cost us. We tried to make it up on volume. That was, a really, that was it's brilliant. a really bad business yeah. model. Mm -hmm. Now we're actually able to make a very, very small profit. We're talking a penny, penny and a half on a, on a dollar profit. But that's enough to help us begin to invest back in the business as we need to do. Because in the old days, you'd have fare wars, right? It was always started by the weakest competitor, and then you guys would match it because you could lose money longer than they could. Yeah, th those were bad days for everyone. Those are, those are days, you know, you don't want a business that consistently lose money where you're constantly going bankrupt, people are being furloughed, employees cannot have careers, mm -hmm. uh, communities can't, can't have service, uh, a, you know, the, the airlines can't make the investments, that's just bad. And your merger really re represented companies that had already been bankrupt. Uh, absolutely, unfortunately. More than, fact, once. Fact, well, More than once. Well, all airlines effectively. Is there anything we can do about the fees, Jeff? Because as a flying customer, it seems like we're charged for leg room, we're charged for baggage. It's so difficult when you have to pay for things that used to be free. Do we just have to accept the fact that fees are just a necessary way of doing business? Well, what you're airlines? paying for is, is, is things that used to be embedded in a single price. We used to price things all together and we didn't give people choice. So you were actually charged for things you didn't use. For example, if, 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 you, if, if you didn't check a bag and I did, Wow. then basically Everybody you paid. were cross-subsidizing, mm -hmm. right? Because I was using the service of the bag and you weren't. Now what we've done is broken the product apart so customers can pick and pay for the things they value and they don't have to pay for things that they don't value. Peter has come here week after week after week and told us uh, what was happening that we didn't know about as consumers. I mean, is there any push for more transparency mm -hmm. about how things work? with airlines? Well, I think transparency is a really good thing, and we're actually investing in a lot of technology, United, to make sure that we can better inform the customer about things that are going wrong in the air traffic control system, uh, delays where the bags are. I mean, it's, it's good. For, what we found is customers want more information, and we need to provide them better information because customers want control of the travel experience. Well, traditionally, the people who needed to know the most, your flight attendants and your gate operators, who had the most public contact, were the least to find out. Yeah, they were exactly. the late, right? Be because the systems were so poor, and the systems were so poor because the carriers were serially bankrupt and mm -hmm. didn't invest in technology they needed. And then there's the Dreamliner. That's mm -hmm. the question I had, because I'm wondering, Peter's been here several times talking about that Dreamliner. Do you find yourself that you want to move that, remove that gorgeous hair of yours, one follicle at a time with the Dreamliner? <laughs> every time Peter comes, Jeff, always there's another problem, the battery, it didn't take off, something broke down. And for people that were so excited about it, do you still believe in the 787 Dreamliner? Absolutely believe in it. It's a because it's why? A it's a look, it's a terrific airplane. It's revolutionary technology. But it doesn't seem <clears> to but, be working. But it actually, you know, the, the dispatch reliability of that airplane today is slightly below where the triple seven was when it was introduced. The triple seven has become a, the great workhorse for long haul routes. Mm -hmm. the, the 787, has it had issues? Of course it has. Yeah. But all new air, airplanes have issues. And this is a quantum leak in technology, not only for the consumer, but for the operator. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of faith in it. it, it it's been a tough introduction, yes. no doubt about so it. So you're here to but say it, this. But it's a great airplane. It's, and it, it is, it is a, it's a really wonderful airplane mm -hmm. for our customers to fly. So you're here to say that the safety issues are behind you 
with respect to the Dreamliner. That I think that, was the I think the Dreamliner is absolutely fixed. a safe airplane. Um, it has had it has had introductory issues, and certainly the battery issue was a real problem. Uh, but but Boeing worked well with the FAA to fix that problem. Mm -hmm. and, All right, I got a question uh, for it, you. It's, it's a great airplane, and that is when you buy a new car and the car breaks, it's under warranty, mm -hmm. right? So, are you making a claim against Boeing for a little uh, compensation here? Uh, the airplane's under warranty, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. You are now considered the largest airline. Are you as big as the best? No, you know, I, I don't really care. We happen you to don't. be the largest airline, but that doesn't really matter. What matters is to become the leading airline. That is an airline that gives good customer service, that's reliable, where, the, where your coworkers enjoy coming to work. They trust each other. They trust management. They, they, they're respected. They're listened to. And that's the culture that we're developing at the New Do United. you expect to see more consolidation? Well, with American and U.S. airways, yeah, we've yes. seen that. Um, yeah, I think in in the United U.S. and foreign in all the United country. States, uh, I think consolidation is pretty much over. Uh, internationally, well, it has to be over. You're down to four airlines. Yeah, uh, internationally, internationally, um, there's still consolidation going on. Cross-border consolidation is much right. more difficult because there are laws that prohibit that. Well, you know, when you take a look at the merger, the last merger to happen is going to be U.S. Air and American, and they argued when they when they, when they went out and talked about the merger that they're only going to overlap on 12 routes. And then the government accountability office said, well, wait a minute, it's actually going to affect about 1,500 different kinds of airfares in cities because of connecting fares. So as a competitor to this new merged airline, which will then become the biggest airline, right, are you worried about this merger? Uh, no, I'm not because, uh, you know, we lose U.S. Airways as a partner in Star Alliance. And so we're, we're the carrier probably most directly affected by the merger in that sense. Um, but I think consolidation has been very, very healthy for our business. It's actually per permitted us to become a business as opposed to an airline. Uh, and so, I th I th and I th so I think actually it's good. If we come back one year from now and have a conversation, what is the one thing you hope you will have accomplished? A year from now? Yeah. I, I wanna, a year from now, I want to make sure that our customer service continues to improve, that we are a very reliable airline, and that the customers continue to experience all the new products and services that we're introducing that they really price. like. And what about Charlie's upgrade? <laughs> yeah. I'll work on that after this. I see, they're that? working on it. That's what capacity will get you. <laughs> Upgrade's always a good thing. I guess. Your best. Thank Spoken you by the Thank queen you. of the upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you both.